All right, so Kyler Murray was drafted by the A's last year in the top 10. And he was given a four-point-whatever-million-dollar bonus, which he had to pay back if he ever did football. Now, at the time, Kyler Murray was not considered a top-flight football prospect, but he goes out and he wins the Heisman Trophy because Lincoln Riley is a quarterback whisperer, first Baker Mayfield, and now, now Kyler Murray. So he becomes a first-round draft pick in all likelihood. So he announces today that he's fully committing to being a football player. Okay, fine. But there are a couple of um, people that get hurt in this. Well, really, one, one entity, and that's the Oakland A's. When the Oakland A's drafted this guy, they had no idea that he would ever be a first-round draft pick. He was not thought of as that way in the NFL. He was an outstanding college baseball player. That's why they gave him as much money as they did. So now he wins the Heisman Trophy. He's been told he's going to go in the first round in a, in a draft that's not quarterback deep. And the A's get nothing. They don't get another pick. They don't get a compensatory pick. They don't get any bonus slot money. Nothing. They got burned. There should be some sort of codicil that Major League Baseball has that if this happens to a team, they should get a similar draft pick the next year. And make it tight and make it sure that nobody could take advantage of it. But this is not fair to the Oakland A's. Well, I don't know what you do about it. Like you said, Just give him another pick. Well, but... but you don't do those things at a vacuum. If you say, all right, we're going to give you the 10th overall pick in next year's draft to compensate for what you lost, but if I've got, if I'm Team X with the 10th pick, now I drop to 11 just because you happen to get screwed? Even if you don't do that, then give them a compensatory pick I, after I, the first hey, round. Listen, caveat emptor. Buyer beware. Yeah. Right? Honestly, they but knew he was a football buyer. player. No, but you knew he was a football player. All right? So maybe you have to almost be an NFL scout the same way you are an MLB scout. How good a prospect could he be? Could he play his way into the first round of the draft? Right? I mean, I, 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 I understand that you kind of feel bad for the Oakland A's, but, hey, that just happens. All right? You're, you're taking a, a, a guy that's a two-sport player. You misjudged his talent as a, as a football player. Now, that's not your Ballywick. You're baseball guys, so you're not supposed to know. But this is the risk you run. That maybe that's why the other nine teams that were ahead of him passed on him because they knew that this was going to be a possibility. I, I feel bad for the A's, but I don't know what you do about it. And he did return the portion of the bonus money that he was given to. He would have gotten the remainder of it if he had reported to camp next week. Um, now the question, which I think advances the story, did he make the right decision? And I'm going to tell you this, because everybody out there who listens to the show knows how I love baseball. It's my favorite sport. Then football and basketball in one order and others next. I love baseball, but I got to tell you this. They're losing the great athletes that are coming through the system. They just are because of the way the sport is set up. In terms of you sign, you end up going down to the minor leagues. The minor leagues, from what I've heard, I was lucky. There, 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 there are broadcasters that work nine, ten years in the minor leagues. It's hell. You're riding buses, 10-hour buses sometimes. The, the, the accommodations are awful. There's no money whatsoever. So if you're not a big bonus baby who could live off your $4 million bonus, if you're just a kid who got picked in the 30th round, you have to live on $500 a month. It's not a great come on to a great athlete. So if you're, if you're an athletic kid from a poor background, what are you going to gravitate toward? Football? Where you go to college, get drafted, boom, you're in the pros. Basketball, go to college for one year, get drafted, you're in the pros. There's no minor leagues per se. In baseball, and now with the way the collective bargaining agreement is fleshed out, let's say you go to college. Let's say you leave after your junior year. You're 21 years old. You get drafted. Let's say at the, at the least you're going to be in the minor leagues two years, maybe three. You get called up at 24. The team then has control of you for six more years. You become a free agent at the age of 30. Manny Machado and Bryce Harper, whatever warts they might have, are outstanding players. They're 26. They have not been able to get a job. When you're 30, you're in that tweener land where you're not going to be able to cash in. So you get to sign how many contracts that are big? None. Arbitration is the only time you're going to make decent money. And that's a year-to-year -year basis. Kyler Murray gets drafted in the NFL. If he gets drafted in the top half of the first round, there's guaranteed money. And then he ends up playing four years, signs a big money contract if he's a good player. I'm telling you, everything's set up, Don and Peter, 
for baseball to lose the great athletes that are out there. 